Peter? Yeah. One second. Now, it's Peter Dills, the king of cuisine. It's Peter Dills, indeed, the king of cuisine, here at a secret location Sunday morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Good morning. It's Peter Dills. Turtle is here. It is Go Country 105. We have a great show today. Halfway through the show, we're going to be talking about barbecue because we've got Labor Day coming up, and I know everybody wants to get out in their backyards because there's really nowhere else to go, and barbecue. So Jim's going to be uh, calling us in, and we are actually, if you're watching on Facebook right now, I've got a barbecue right behind me. Turtle and I... Thank you. Thank you. There's thank tons you. of people here There's today, too. There's a ton of people here today. <laughs> There's a ton of people this here. This is the barbecue I wish I would have had on 4th of July, by the way. So thank you, Peter. Well, this was your idea because we, <laughs> we didn't have a restaurant to go to this week. Next week, we're going to be at Boa Steakhouse in Santa Monica. And Terrell said, what about that place that you go to all of those great, awesome barbecues at? Would, would, it's very cool. Yeah, would Jim from Huntington Meats be willing to donate some food that we can <laughs> make? Yeah. And I go, man, I like it the way you think. So this is a little bit different today because we are, you know, starting off the show. It's about, like I said, five minutes after eight. But some of the segments that you're going to hear today are pre-recorded just because uh, we wanted to add some some noise to it, some adventure, some inner uh, interaction. It's kind of like uh, um, Three's Company, where it's like pre-recorded before a live studio audience type type action. Our phone number is 626-685-785. <laughs> Our phone we number is... give them the right number, seriously. <laughs> These people need a no, word. Now I know why we only got five phone calls last <laughs> week. Our phone number is 626-765-765. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't even know. 765. If, if only it was written on a paper, Peter. <laughs> like, it, like I should have done. But we're <laughs> going to be giving away a gift card, actually a $75 gift card to uh, Huntington Meats for those of you that can figure out the phone number to give us <laughs> a call. It for them. Yeah, it's hey, it's Hey, it's $75. You know, it shouldn't we, be easy. It shouldn't be easy. But I've put together my own barbecue tips. Are you a charcoal guy or are you a grill guy? I am... Um, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a Hank Hill man. Uh, I'm all about propane and propane accessories. All right. Well, we're gonna be charcoal is too difficult for me. We're there's, gonna there's be like this entire thing you got to do. We're gonna be grilling today. All right. We're gonna be actually grilling. We're not barbecuing because the term barbecue refers to basically low and slow, and barbecuing means like four hours on the grill. So when you're grilling, okay. it, it could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes. Do you understand the difference? Uh, no, but give me another drink and I will, maybe. <laughs> oh, it's too early in the morning. You shouldn't be drinking. You're right. But we're going to have some fun Silly today. Silly me. Okay, it's officially like we're, we're – are we waning down on summer? We're, we're no, moving – No, summer is, is finally here upon us. We're moving towards – uh, what we call the, fall. We have no tailgating happening. We have no football happening. So I wanted to talk about barbecuing today. Are you, like I just said, are you a griller? Are you, uh, are you a charcoal guy? I'm more of a charcoal guy. But here are some benefits. Here's some benefits to using charcoal. And here's some benefits to using a grill. All right? So pay attention here. Okay. Okay. Charcoal barbecue gets very hot. You can't really control the heat unless you have one of those water sprayers with you right right okay, okay. it normally needs uh, it n- normally manually lit and preheated for like 20 minutes whereas a grill a propane grill it's going to get hot like right away that's why hank hill is the best salesman of all cleaning is more complicated due to the ashes that's a negative well, do, but don't you leave them in there for the flavor isn't that like the whole thing some about people it? do some people do a um, plus side of using charcoal barbecue is it's a smoky flavor every time you grill. Mm. That's that's definitely a plus. Oh, yeah. It's tough to keep, as I mentioned, a constant temperature when you're using charcoal. Especially because like, you're lifting up the, uh, the, the 
top up and down looking at the uh, pieces of meat that you're barbecuing. So that temperature is going to fluctuate. Another plus to using charcoal is you get to play with real fire. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't play with fire. Okay. Uh, continuing on, typically a, a gas barbecue, typically pricier than charcoal, though inexpensive models are available. Uh, a more complicated grill means more parts that can break. Uh, but a gas barbecue is easy to clean. Uh, plus, a gas barbecue has the option or not for smoky flavors. You can use things like wood chips and, and a smoker box, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. oh yeah. Okay, so those are the kind of the two things. I, I thought it was kind of fun because I've been talking about barbecue and, and, and brought up the question many times about are you a grill guy or are you a charcoal guy? And I thought, okay, let's at least throw out the advantages of using both, all right? So you brought s'mores. We're going to be making, I did. yeah, we're going to be making s'mores in another segment. This, we're going to do four segments today, and like I said, some of the segments that you're going to hear are going to be like pre-recorded. When was the last time you did a s'more? When was the last time you s'mored it up? I don't <sighs> know if that's a. It's been a while, son. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> that's why I had a but uh, I had a windfall of graham crackers and chocolate fall upon me. So I was like, why not bring um, the s'mores upon everyone? It always puts a smile on everyone's face. You, you mentioned about the, the charcoal and the ashes, mm -hmm. and, you, and you thought that maybe you should keep the ashes in there for the next time? Yeah, yeah. According, to what, according to what I wrote up, if you're using a charcoal grill, you always empty the ashes from the last grilling session. I don't know about that. No? I, I really don't know about that. That's, uh, you know, my, my stuff is uh, all wives' tales, you know? All right. So what to grill and what not to grill. Okay? Cuz you wanted to talk about barbecue. Well, you you wanted to talk about barbecue for 50 minutes straight. <laughs> at here on Go this Country 105. Go Country 105. But, every, but right now everybody's listening, taking notes because people don't know what barbecue is. They just think that they turn on the barbecue and then they just throw stuff on and voila. How about a grilled cheese? Have you ever barbecued a grilled cheese sandwich? That makes sense. Well, wouldn't it become a barbecue cheese? Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> good. A, a, vegetables are easy to grill. Pick your favorite yeah. vegetables and give it a try. Uh, vegetable kebabs, for those of you mm, that are vegans. Yeah. Uh, corn on the cob, everybody knows mm. that, right? Corn on the cob. You gotta do corn on the cob. Uh, grilled sweet onions wrapped in bacon. Grilled pizza doesn't have to be grilled complicated. Pizza. It doesn't have to be complicated. Beef tenderloin sandwiches, pork chops, and caramelized onions. Uh, how about chicken? Roadside chicken? Mm, yeah. Teriyaki beef kebabs. Ooh, that sounds good. Salmon. Classic baby back ribs. Now, for to, to me, to be a classic baby back ribs, those have to be barbecued. You can't grill them. You can't do it quick. That is that is right there. That has to be low and slow. That's like a 16, 19-hour day. Ex well, five or six or eight-hour day. But you can always start early. Go home early. Yeah. All right, it's Peter Dills. It's Go Country 105. We're talking about barbecue tips. We've got Labor Day coming up, and like I said, it, uh, at half past the hour, we're going to be. I'm going to actually stand up. Somehow you've configured the microphone, <laughs> and I'm going to stand like up that? above the grill. And Jim Cascone is going to give us like basically step by step, uh, 101 barbecuing on how to make this tri tip that is actually laying right flat on the grill. I know, I've right been, behind me, like like slobbering looking at it. it it looks so good. Tricks of the trade for barbecuing. Okay. I hope you're writing this stuff down. I'm writing it all. To avoid losing the juices during barbecuing, mm. turning, always flip your meat or vegetables using tongs or a spatula. Never, ever use a fork. I'm a fork man. You that... can't be a fork man. If you put the fork in the chicken or the pork chop, all the good stuff's going to run out. Well, I didn't think of that. Try to limit the flips. Ideally, even with a steak or chicken, you should only flip once. Can you do that? No. I fl I'm a I'm a six time flipper. Don't. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> Whatever that weird? you do, don't press down on the burgers. I hate that. Oh, when no, I'm in no, a no. restaurant, I do that. I've never done that. When I'm in a restaurant and the guy is like, like they want to. Well, the reason why they do that is because they want to get the burger to cook faster. But they're just pressing down so hard on the meat, it's just pushing again all the what I call all the good juices yeah. out of it. 
we, we back in the day when we would make our own baby back ribs, we would actually boil them in water, in hot water. I would never do that again because that's just getting rid of all the great juices that are in there. Okay. You need those juices. People. You need the, the juice is your friend. It is. The juice is your friend. Just all like the flavor. Just like the turtle is your friend. <laughs> Uh, you can infuse uh, grilled food, w- grilled foods with herb essence. Toss herbs directly onto the charcoal while you're grilling. Okay, that's something new to me because. Well, that's why you're listening to the show. It's a food show. I'm trying to tell you things that you normally wouldn't do. I, w- I would not do that because my whole thought process is I'm throwing the herbs on the charcoal, and the charcoal is going to burn it up. Speaking of burning, if you want to baste your meats or vegetables, save save this step for last. This way, the sugars and marinade or sauce won't have to have time to caramelize. Barbecue sauce. What I'm talking about is barbecue sauce. If you're going to put barbecue sauce on your steak, which makes no sense because there should be enough flavor in the in the steak that you don't have to put a lot of barbecue sauce. You ever go any, to a, any sauce? I, I am anti sauce on steak. I mean, why would you go to a, a a restaurant like Taylor's Steakhouse and order a one steak sauce? Wouldn't the steak shouldn't the steak just be good enough? That you don't have yeah. to put A1 steak sauce on there? Preach. Right? <laughs> you are I mean, exactly right. I, I guess it's the it's Peter Dills and the Make It Makes Sense show. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I want to set up the show for a little bit later. I, I mentioned Jim Cuscone. We've got a gift card to give away. I'll give out the right phone number when we come back from the break. <laughs> but Turtle's favorite subject is, um, we've got that at the end of the show, is uh, Believe It or Not, right? And I got some other stuff to talk about. The, uh, let's see if you can believe this or not coming up uh, uh, after the show. Hey, before we go to break, we have a new sponsor. Who? Does everybody want to hear about the new sponsor? Yes. Yeah. If you're in the real estate market looking to purchase a new home or your real estate invest, if you're a real estate investor purchasing apartments, shopping centers, strip centers, or commercial office buildings, I've got the guy for you. Who? His name is Steve Barnes. You know that name? It's that name you know already yeah. and trust. Trust Steve Barnes. Call him at Bulldog Property Inspections. And the phone number, he only had enough money for one spot. So make sure you write this number down <laughs> right now because this number is gold. 626-486-7688. That's 626 486 Seven six eight eight, and schedule a comprehensive, detailed inspection report. All reports are easy to read and will be emailed to you in 24 hours. Your inspection report will confirm the current condition of your investment. That Is, sounds good. Isn't Steve Barnes a lawyer as well? No, that's his dad, Carl Barnes. We got all the Barnes wow. guys here. Wow, here. that's amazing. <laughs> Before purchasing your next real estate investment, call Steve at Bulldog Inspections for added insurance and a peace of mind. 626 626- 486-7688. That is 626-486-7688. To wrap it all up, if you're thinking about investing in something, call Steve Barnes first, Bulldog Inspections, 626-486-7688. Let's take a break now. That will give us time to get Jim Cascone on the phone so that we can get some of his holiday tips for you barbecuing. It's Peter Dills. It is Go Country 105. Carl Barnes, I drove by Me Piachi last night. It's closed. What's going on? What? I don't know. Oh. Monday night? Maybe they're closed, Maybe on, they're Monday closed on Monday. Oh. Is okay. that uh, Italian? Like, the, the Italians the are closed. closed till soon enough. Ooh. He thinks they got in trouble for something. Ooh. Or okay. Or did somebody get the pew? Yeah, pew. That's it. Okay. Have you guys. Have you guys Hey, thank you everyone for tuning in on the Facebook. Please share us. Uh, if you are barbecuing right now, let us know what you're barbecuing. That would be great. Really appreciate it.
right now we're having a somewhat of a no 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 we're good no no we're good oh yeah we're having a party yeah thanks to ken by the way yeah thanks ken lovely house all right all right we still we we still got to do the um somebody might be calling in later <laughs> no they will be they no will he's be? just he he just texted me so you can you i text you his we can number. do it now the um, your next segment let's do it um well i, I want to come back from the we can do it now yeah okay because i gotta then, call him and get him ready can i switch over to that mic yeah it's already ready okay um you want to call him and say just hold on yeah okay call him and say okay give him one second What? You have to do the turn off in the next segment. Okay. Yeah. Are you there? Give me one second. I'm going to patch you in really quick just to test out the line, okay? You don't know when, but she goes, should I start making reservations now? This is probably a good idea. And now you all know that. Hey, Jim, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Am I coming in, Claire? You're coming in fantastic. I'm going to move Peter one second. Hey, Jim, can you hear me? Jim, can you hear me? Give one second. Give one second. Jim, can you hear Peter? Hey, Jim, can you hear me? I can hear you. Give one second. I got to plot it. Can you talk a little bit more, Peter? So uh, right now I'm standing up, I'm over a grill, and we've got a uh, tri-tip that we're actually cooking live on Facebook right now and live on Go, Co- well, on Go Country 105. So, Jim, I'm going to ask you, the, you know, the normal questions that I ask you, Labor Day's coming up, um, some cooking tips, and uh, if you have any suggestions on cooking um, a tri-tip. Cool. Okay. And we're grilling, right? We are grilling. Not barbecuing, we're grilling. Okay. Okay, and uh, you ready, Peter? I'm ready. Okay, give me one second. Actually, it's Peter Dills. We're back from the break. Go Country 105. It's a little bit after the first segment, making it about 8.15, 8.17 in the morning. Do you need to get a hold of us? Our phone number is 626-765-7543, 765-7543. Make that number a priority because you could win a $75 gift card to the Huntington Meats at the Farmer's Market in Los Angeles if you know the answer to this question. Are you ready there, listeners? Blank is a Spanish name roughly translates to strained pineapple. Strained pineapple is a Spanish name that roughly translates to what? What popular drink is it? It's strained pineapple. Give us a call, 626-765-7543. It's Peter Dills on the line right now. We are talking to Jim Cascone of the aforementioned Huntington Meats, <laughs> Huntington Meat Market there in uh, Farmer's Market on La Brea. Jim, are you there? Hi, how are you? I am good. Hi, I'm, I'm, I, how are you feeling? How, how are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm getting better. I'm feeling a little bit better. Because we invited you up for this soiree that oh, we're having at Ken's house. And I am standing. I am three feet over a piece of, I, I guess that, where's Ken? How big is that tri-tip, guys? Is that a three-foot, is that a three-pound tri-tip? Okay, I'm, I'm looking at a three-pound tri-tip that we're grilling. Jim, you're the expert. I need help. How do we cook this guy? Well, uh, um it's seasoned or marinated, and uh, either way. Uh, How about both? Side, How about all of the above? Okay. Uh, what I would do is uh, get your grill really nice and, and hot. Okay. All right. And then sear it, maybe okay. two minutes on each side. All right. Okay. Fatty side up, you're going to end up. Fatty side you're up. Gonna turn, you're going to turn off. 
two of your burners if you have a four burner and you're going to cook on the indirect side of the uh the barbecue or grill and then uh, it's going to uh cook a lot better and you're not going to have those flare-ups and you... that's what you kind of want to avoid but the fatty side up will make the juices and everything kind of marinate the the meat as we go you will flip it over towards the end portion of of your cooking process now, if it's about a two and a half pound tri-tip, I usually use a thermometer. Um, I'm not there to actually see. Right, right. A thermometer can... uh, would give you 125 internal temperature. Okay. You would want to cook it to that. That will give you like a medium. Once you get to that internal temperature, take it off the grill and let it rest. It's going to cook for, uh, you're going to let it rest for about 20 minutes. And that way it cooks internally. And voila, you have your great meal of the night. Okay, you use the term indirect heat. Is that something that we should use for cooking all beef, all steaks? Is indirect or are I, there... I highly recommend indirect heat, but you're going to get your grill nice and, and hot. You're going to sear, whether it's a steak or a tri-tip, at least maybe one and a half to two minutes each side to hold in the juices. And on that particular tri-tip, you're going to keep that fatty side up. Okay. We've got Labor Day coming up, um, a holiday, and so we're going to be doing a lot of backyard barbecues, a lot of cooking. Are there is there anything happening in the in the world of beef and meats that we should know about? Are there any shortages out there right now, or is there just plenty of cattle, plenty of meat? There's Harris Ranch, who we uh, supply in our store. Uh, they have plenty of beef, and uh, it's a great great beef. You'll know when you eat that tri tip how delicious it's going to be. We're talking to Jim Cascone. He's the owner of the, the uh, Huntington Meats out there on, on La Brea. Uh, open 365 days a year? No. 300, what, what, what days are you closed? Well, we only close Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. All right. And otherwise, you guys are always open. We're, it, we're open. If Our it, hours right now are 8 to 7. We're uh, at the original Farmer's Market, Fairfax and 3rd. That's right, and we're getting ready to eat some of your great, great beef there. Yeah, I do. I do like Harris Ranch. You know, they're a sponsor of the show uh, here on Go Country 105 Sundays here at Go Country 105 8 until 9. We're here each and every Sunday morning at 8 and to 9, and we're always out and about. And today we're going to be doing some barbecuing at up in Altadena. I don't want to give anybody the address. An undisclosed, location. undisclosed location. <laughs> but next week, Jim, guess what? We're going to be at Boa Steakhouse in Santa Monica. Oh, nice! Yeah, having some Very of their nice. having some of their steaks and doing the show, uh, uh, social distancing, of course. Uh, but they have a great patio there at Boa Steakhouse, and we're going to be checking that out and talking to the chef and the general manager and all of that kind of stuff. Jim Cascone is with the Huntington Meat Market there in uh, uh, Farmers Market. Um, it, what, give, give us some things that you guys. Uh, something something out of the ordinary that our listeners should even consider um, barbecuing or grilling for the holidays. Well, we have a lot of things. We have the cap off of the uh, top sirloin, uh, which is sometimes, well, it is called the picanha. Mm -hmm. um, Argentina picanha. I even have Argentina beef. And it, ha it is the cap off of the, uh, the top sirloin. Kind of like a tri-tip, the same method of cooking. Uh, next time you come in, Peter, I'd love to give you uh, a sample. Uh, it's delicious. And I actually have it from Argentina. So it it's, tastes a lot different than uh, American beef, I'm telling you. Okay, sorry about that. I switched microphones. We were at the barbecue. Now we went back uh, to the table. Jim Cascone, Huntington Meats. Hey, thanks for the uh, heads up. You already mentioned. Well, that's okay. Thank you for having me on. And I'm sorry I couldn't make it. But 
as they say, well, maybe next time. As they say next time, Jim Cascone, go visit Jim out at the farmers market and La Brea at farmers market, and you will be, oh, you'll be happy. Trust me, they've got some really great beef. Th- thanks for the call, Jim. Thank you so much. All right, Bye now. All right, it's Peter Dills, Go Country 105. We've dedicated our whole entire show to the art of barbecuing, and we're trying to give away tips. And if you just tuned into the show and you missed some of those tips, don't worry. We're on Instagram. We're on uh, Twitter. We're on all the social media network platforms. And most importantly, I'd say we're on iTunes and podcast. What is a podcast? Never tried one before. It's that only it's the only purple icon on your iPhone. So if you want to listen to podcasts, just go onto your smartphone, hit the po- purple podcast icon, find Peter Dills, follow me, like me, and you can listen to the shows all over again. And write a review. You can actually and write a review. Too. Write a review. And maybe if you're having trouble getting to sleep at night, you can just listen to the podcast. Six two six seven six five seven five four three six two six seven six five seven five four three. Our trivia question for those of you who are interested in maybe winning a seventy five dollar gift card to the forementioned again uh, Huntington Meats is this Spanish name roughly translates to strained pineapple. Mm. Strained pineapple, and it is a kind of a drink. Mm. I put together a whole list of drinks that we're going to talk about in our next segment, our third segment, and how the names came to be. By the way, did you like my my camera work and engineering work at the same time yeah we yeah i did a little that was my mistake i i jumped Love over it. i jumped over from the grill we have a, a microphone on the grill and everyone can see that right yeah everybody can see that so hey coming up at nine o'clock this morning Lori allen playing america's favorite country hits can't wait right here on go country 105 keep so it locked in keep it locked in to go country 105 we should always be uh listening to go country 105. If you've got a restaurant, yeah, I know in a perfect world, we just come on here on the radio. We wouldn't need to sell you advertising. We're not selling you advertising. We're just talking about your restaurant and you're just basically supporting the show, right, Turtle? We support you, so you should in turn support the show. (laughs) And if you are so inclined, go on to Instagram. We did a one minute video because we wanted to keep it less than a video of me actually making the one minute. Uh, Bloody Mary. And and when we come back from the break, I'm going to explain where the name Bloody Mary came from. Well, from the legend, right? Something to do with Queen Elizabeth. Ooh, Yeah, something to do with Queen Elizabeth. But just like all the stuff that we talk about here on the show, there might be different variations of truth to where these names came from. So it's Peter Dills. It is Go Country 105. Our website is DiningWithDills.com, DiningWithDills.com. There's a bunch of fun stuff. You can go look there for information on how to get a hold of us and the Instagram. There's all the links and the podcast, and it's all right there on DiningWithDills.com. I've got a few more barbecue tips and tricks, and... um, Man, are we going to be able to eat on the show? If, I'm, I'm hope so. Okay. I'm looking at all well, this where, food. Where's it? Where's our our chef Manny? Is it, where, who's our chef Manny or is it Brian? Which which, which guy is our chef? They're all, they're all on their union break right oh, okay. now. Okay. <laughs> well, I, oh, he's got to put the pork chops on the uh, the grill. Gotcha. All right. Well, say hey, thanks a lot to Jim Cascone for calling in. Let's take a break. When we come back from the break, turtle, I've got some nine or ten or eleven different things. That why, how the names of these certain drinks came to be. What do you think about that? I can't wait. All right, it's Peter Dills. It's Go Country 105. Don't touch that dial. Okay, so turn up your Mr. D for the pork chops. I don't want Mr. D. Put them all. He's, I think, Ken. Did he turn them up? Is that the right? Oh, that's the right heat. Do I have the right heat on there? Sure. Do you know how? No, just put them on the grill. Oh, mother. Oh, I thought. No, you know, it always and, doesn't take over. Oh, Manny's. Entranya. Entranya. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah, 18 cents all day. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, what's the other place? Uh, uh, on Green Street. Uh, oh, Malbec. Malbec. Oh, Malbec. Yeah, that's usually where I get them. 
Okay, let's do that. Can we, can we do that? Yeah, we can. Okay. You just, I couldn't do it from the, the phone and then right thing because I'm, I'm using the same phone for everything. So maybe we, uh, maybe we end with that. We end with that. We end with that. The, the segment with that. You do all your barbecue pit? Uh, no, the, um, I'm going to do the where the, the names of these drinks came from. Yeah. So we're at 24 right now. Ooh. That's why I was trying to tell you, like, KFC, KFC. Oh. Going everywhere. Okay. okay. Come back. This is, uh... I know. Again, thank you, everyone, listening on Facebook, watching us. Uh, do the show we really appreciate it uh, feel free to share the show right now if you guys are barbecuing or grilling you have any tips uh, go ahead and uh, comment uh, right now on uh, Facebook and uh, we will uh, maybe get to those comments okay It's Peter Dills back from the break. It's our third break of the day. It's Go Country 105. You know, I got some uh, I guess bad news. Is one of my favorite joints, the Paul Martin Grill on South Lake in Pasadena, has decided to call it quits. Uh, that's not to say that the other Paul Martins, that w- there was one in Santa Monica, that there's a couple other ones, they're still open. But the Pasadena Paul Martins has decided to uh, end their stint in Pasadena after three, three and a half years. And I'm really bummed at, about that because there's some really great people that I got to meet there that work there and just uh, hung out there. But times are tough out there. But we're going to keep moving ahead, Turtle, because we're Go Country 105. And we just spread the joy here every Sunday morning about positive news that's happening in our industry. And our industry is the food industry and restaurant industry. And not only that, but we got some amazing pork loins that just got thrown on the barbecue i can't wait to even taste those right and then i'm going to make my bloody mary for you using beluga vodka if only i knew where the name bloody mary came from for me i I thought it was always like a you know turtle you know you're you're that's a good segue into (laughs) what i was wanting to talk about and i thought i put together a list because you never know about these um names of these particular drinks and where they came from but actually um the the bloody mary was coined by um queen elizabeth in england because it was uh, something about the catholics intruding into um or, or coming into england and then she coined the phrase um bloody mary and mm. that's how it came about is was queen elizabeth okay now where did it start now that's a whole nother story and do you know the, the the epilogue to that story? I do, I do, I do. There's um, Harry's. There's a there's an old. It's still around in Hong Kong. You can go to these bars called Harry's New York Bars. You can Google it. They're famous, but obviously, what they tried to do is these old school bars that was that were popular in New York, and then they opened them in Paris and they opened them in New York, but they were all called Harry's New York Bar. Anybody ever heard of Harry's New York Bar? Yes. All right. Harry's New York Bar. So that was the guy, Pepe. He was the bartender in the 20s. He said he said that he was the one that invented the Bloody Mary. But then in the 30s, some guy wrote a book and mentioned the Bloody Mary, and he says that he invented the Bloody Mary. Have you ever invented a drink, Peter? Yeah. I put together – I've invented a margarita. This is how no I make way. Yes. I, don't, I haven't come up with a name on it yet. But the, and I go to restaurants and I actually tell the bartenders how to make my margarita. Are you, are you going to reveal those? I'm going to tell you right now because you brought it up. Okay. It's kind of taking away from my story here. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that, Ken. Harry's New York oh, Bar. Wow. Look at that. Where they invented? They say that they invented the Bloody Mary at Harry's New York Bar. So that's a treat for those of you that are watching on Facebook right there. Ken brought it out an ashtray or his cigar ashtray. And it says Harry's New York Bar. 
How that cool is, is cool. that? Very cool. So the invent the drink that I invented, if you go into a Mexican restaurant and you ask for a lemon, do you know what you get? A lime. You get a lime. Yeah. So weird. now what I do is I say, I want a yellow lemon. They get it, a yellow lemon. So I like my margaritas slightly blended. So I ask them to peel the lemon and put only the peel part of the lemon in the blender. And when they blend it, the oils from the essence, the essence fall all the way into the margarita. And you can taste the difference and you can try really? it at home. You can try it at home by making a margarita at home by just using the lemon peel. I don't know where I got the idea, but that's the way I make my margaritas. That kind of makes sense because if you do, if you get, you know, one of those, uh, you can shave off and get some shavings. You could do that. You know, off of the uh, the rind. Mm. In case you just tuned in and you're looking for country music, don't worry, it'll be here at nine. In case you just tuned in and go, what is this guy talking about? This is not an infomercial. Okay, even though the, at the top of the hour they have to do that and say, you know, Go Country does not endorse or deny anything that Peter <laughs> Dills is saying. But the truth of the matter is, this is a food show, and food and country music go together great. Exactly. Right? Okay. So does barbecue. And so does barbecue, and we're going to be doing that. Uh, lickety split. Sex on the beach is a famous drink, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sex on the beach typically consists of a few ingredients. Is it uh, orange juice? That's one of them. Okay. Pineapple uh, juice. Pineapple juice. Cranberry uh, juice. And peach. Schnapps. Peach schnapps and, and vodka. vodka. Wow. You're a bartender. I am. Uh, one popular lore about this cocktail's root states that a distributor for peach schnapps sponsored a contest in Florida offering prize money to the bar that sold the most of his peach schnapps. Following the announcement of the contest, the Florida bartender named Ted Pazio reportedly using, used schnapps to create this suggestively named cocktail reported by sources. You know what? You can always tell a newcomer that is drinking because that's one of the first drinks that I... Oh, like an amateur. Yeah, that... That's always, so you're saying I wouldn't order a Sex on the Beach? You you wouldn't. No. Somebody new to drinking would be ordering that. The bartender, Ted Pazio, named the cocktail Sex on the Beach because he figured there's only two reasons why people were going to vacation for spring break in Florida. Um, sex and the and beach. The beach. Okay. Sex on the beach. Gotcha. All right. Not, not Disneyland. So Disneyland out of a scale there. of 1 to 10, do you believe it? Or, or not? Do not. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, Florida is, is the party capital of the world for uh, spring breakers. So, yeah, makes sense. All right. A mimosa. You've made a mimosa oh, before. Oh, tons. It's just basically cheap sparkling wine and orange juice, right? Equal parts of sparkling wine and fruit juice. This brunch favorite likely gets its title from the name of a plant, the mimosa. A, a, I didn't even know that was a a plant. I it's, didn't even know it, that was a thing. It's an orange. It's a bright orange-yellow plant that has flowers that happens to be the same color as the mixed champagne and orange juice once you mix the drink. Thus, mimosa. I give that a 9 out of 10. I believe that. I, be, well, uh, I should have done one that is fake. You should have. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> These are all real. These are all real. Uh, margaritas. Why a margarita? Uh, obviously named after a female. Mar uh, bartender Carlos Danny Hera supposedly thought up the drink at 1938 in Tijuana. He, cre he cre created it for Marjorie King, an aspiring actress that was allergic, she says, to everything except for tequila. Believe it or not. <laughs> now I feel like we're now. Um, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. After, craft uh, after crafting something for King to drink, Herrera reportedly dubbed the drink the Margarita, which is a spin on the Marjorie's name, Margarita, Spanish, I guess. After seemingly debunked origin, uh, the original story suggests that a wealthy Texas-based socialite named Margarita Sams first made the drink for friends in 1948 and named it after herself. But in 1945, three years before, Sams claimed to have created the drink. The first shipment of Jose Cuervo arrived oh, wow. in the United States. So there's something right yeah. there. Let's circle that. In what year was the first shipment of Jose Cuervo available in the United States? Was it the Cuervo Gold? The 1945. Cuervo uh, and and they, Jose Cuervo came up with a slogan 
And their slogan was, speaking of slogans, I've got breaking news what? coming on the ticker in about five minutes. How much time till our next break? Five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. I knew that. I've got breaking news. You're not going to believe the news I've got to report. I'm, I think we're going to break it here first. Uh, anyway, the, Jose Cuervo's slogan was, Margarita, it's more than a girl's name. I believe that one. Nah, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. I mean, they couldn't name it Sam's. You know what I mean? That just, imagine, can I get a Sam's on the rocks? It's Peter Dills. It's Go Country 105. Turtles here. We're, we're having a barbecue at our good friend Ken Fuller's house. We're partying. We've got Brian and Leslie. And, hey, if you need some tchotchkes and all that kind of stuff, some, some things to put your logos on, you got to call Leslie Grossman at, 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 what, at Halo. Halo, we'll figure out her number, but uh, she's a good girl. And if your company needs some stuff that has your name on it, she's a great girl. She's great. You just met her. I just met her. Yeah. I I feel like I've known her for years. You slipped her your phone number, didn't you? Well, yeah. Well, there's Brian (laughs) over there. He didn't like that. (laughs) I slipped him my number two. All right. How do you think the the martini got its name? Uh, Some guy named Martin, probably. you're, You're right. You're actually right. Typically made from gin or vodka and vermouth, the martini is widely believed to have gotten its name simply... Because Martini and Rossi's vermouth was used in this cocktail's initial initial development, thus martini. I'll have a martini, because that's all it is is vermouth, and, um, and the vodka and, and vodka or gin. Yeah. But I like mine with the le- again back to the lemon peel and the onion. That's what I like. You're a Gibson too, guy. That's a Gibson. Very. You're you're on a roll today. <laughs> I wasn't going to pay you the money, but I think I might have <laughs> to. All right. Um, how about the Manhattan? Where did the Manhattan come from? Pa- popularized in the 1800s and consisting of rye, sweet vermouth, bitters, the Manhattan has a bit of enigmatic history. Basically, the Manhattan was possibly invented in a club with the same name. Not, okay, not, it was in, not because. It wasn't in New York. No, it wasn't. It wasn't in New York. Well, maybe it was. Maybe the club was just called Manhattan. Or maybe it was a club in the city of I see some Manhattan. things are flipping right now. All right. Only one flip, guys. We, yeah, we only just, one flip. We, we learned that today. Only one flip. All right. Let's do one more. And then I've got breaking news from the Peter Dills News Department. I, it's just like, t- do you have any ticker sounds? Like, dun, 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 dun. Uh, no. I, <laughs> okay. A daiquiri. A daiquiri likely gets. Where, where's, uh, where's my resident Cuban? We have a resident Cuban. We here. have a resident Cuban. Where's my resident Cuban? He's, in, uh, getting... He's getting all right. <laughs> a daiquiri likely gets its name from an island in Cuba. That's, no way. Yeah. All right. I didn't know that there was an island off of Cuba daiquiri? named Dakarai. Dakarai. The cocktail usually contains sugar, rum, lime juice, and simple syrup. And though some may ad- uh, identify the daiquiri with rever- revered author Ernest Hemingway. Legend has it, he's a huge fan of them, or was. The drink itself is likely named after the beach of Daiquiri, which is located on the coast of Cuba. Wow. Were you listening to last show's week? Uh, show? Yes. Were, were yes, you listening, I was. To, I was listening to the show last, last week? week? I was. Where does the Cuban sandwich come from? Oh, Florida. Very good. You were listening. I was um, there. <laughs> I was there. The, the cocktail was first uh, documented by Jennings Cox. The oldest known mention of this cocktail recipe is on a card from 1896 with the name on it. Cox was an American engineer who lived and worked in Cuba after the 1898 Spanish-American War. Some believe that he created the drink when he ran out of gin during a party and then instead used local Cuban distilled wow. rum to make Amen. cocktails. In times of need, that's when uh, things create. Do we have time for one more before this? We have time for one more. Okay. Mai Tai. Mai Tai. We've said this over and over again. It means good drink. It means acceptable. I like it. Yeah. Good drink. Acceptable. I like it. Trader Vic. Trader Vic of the famed uh, Trader Vic's restaurants here in L.A. and Orange County and probably around the world. Uh, He was actually a guy that would get his boat, go down to uh, Tahiti and trade stuff. Like he would bring American products to to Tahiti and then he would bring Tahitian products back to the States. Well, he was a a bit of a playboy and he liked the the ladies and he was having a party one time and he had some, um, 
rum. Uh, he had some rum, and he just didn't know what to do because the, the girls didn't want to drink straight rum, so he just right. decided that he was going to get some pineapples and oranges and guava, whatever they had in Tahiti. So he made this concoction, and he passed it around to the ladies, and one of the, the Tahitian ladies said, Mai Tai. And he looked at her in bewilderment and said, what do you mean? She goes, Mai Tai. It means acceptable, I like, good job, I'll have another. All right? Oh, and hence. Okay, are you ready time. for this? I don't know. We have some breaking news. Breaking news. KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken, after 60 years of using the slogan, finger licking good, has decided to drop that slogan. And I'm I'm just in I'm just bewildered why they did that. It's probably because of the COVID. You're, nobody, you got you. you You're not supposed to touch your hands. face, yeah, right? or your hands or your right. fingers. Peter, what you would not believe what's happening right now? What's happening right now on Go Country 105? We have the Colonel on the line right now. He called six two six seven six five seven five four three. He must have had it on speed dial. He must be a fan. Are you kidding me, the Colonel? Get him on it, the phone right it, now. It could be fake. We don't know. Get him on the phone. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Let's hear Jack it. Nabbit, first you try to steal my recipe, and then you say you can't lick your fingers. Well, I, Colonel Harlan David Sanders, won't stand for this. Claudia and I will continue to lick the sauce off our fingers. Wow. Wow. How did you get him to call? Well, he called. Like, you got him to call. He's the world's oldest man. He's 129 years old now. <laughs> and he's, he still uses a phone. And he still he, that was a cell phone. He know a flip. <laughs> he had a flip phone. <laughs> All right, that was Colonel. What was his middle name? Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Colonel Sanders and his wife. Wow. Yeah, she's still around too. Dude, I can't believe he hasn't been promoted to General Sanders. Uh, he's <laughs> a colonel. Him okay. and uh, Jeff Maxwell over from Mash. He's a private. <laughs> <laughs> still. Oh, Lord, we're having a good time. It's Peter Dills. It's Go Country 105. When we come back from the break, it is time, of course, to play Believe It or Not. It's Peter, <laughs> it's Peter Dills. It's Go Country 105. Oh, that's funny. Oh, I don't know. Man, my, my neck is sweating. Oh, is it, there's a uh, island or a beach called Daiquiri, oh, really? and they invented the the Daiquiri, and that's where the name came from. Okay. You, there's a beach called Daiquiri in the south Cuba? in southwest Cuba. It's a beach. Really? Yeah. I have to look into that. Yeah, I you didn't know that. Research tonight. I thought there was a club in uh, Miami that I hung out with in 1980 called the Manhattan. Yeah. I thought maybe that's where. Maybe. The, no, but no. It sounded like it was way before that. All right, let's see what we got here. We got 12 minutes. All right, daiquiris. For the next, for the next segment. Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Should I move the uh, camera? How's the camera angle? No, it's fine. It's good? Yeah. You want to see what it looks like on the Facebook? On the Facebook? I think I'll my sunglasses. Ooh. Lives and works in Cuba, you said. Uh -huh. Are you the Cuban? I am. We, we were well, I, I, I'm the uh, light Cuban. Okay. The other one's the dark Cuban. Yeah, but yeah. I was actually born in Cuba. The other one's a fake Cuban. Did you swim here? No. Uh, okay. I was four swimmer. Okay. okay. Yeah, I didn't need a two by four, but yeah, I was yeah. one of the last. Yeah. They pretty much cut those flights, yeah. you know, the conventional way where you actually yeah. got out with like lottery numbers. I was one of the last. So they stopped that. I came here in 1970. They pretty much stopped that in the early 70s. No way. Yeah. Well, Thank you. All right. <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Peter. Oh, another good you ready? So it's winding down. We got 12 minutes. 12 more minutes. <laughs> 12 minutos.
everybody out there in Facebook land. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are doing our last segment. Any shout outs, Peter, that you want to give out to the people on Facebook? Eric Chan, Mike Dobbs, Julie from Colombo. She made me a couple mean. Martin- Your bartender. Yeah, made me a couple mean miniature uh, martinis last night. Now, now, Julie, you know where the martini got its name from martini and Rossi. All right. All right. Any uh, shout out to Phil Marty from Sapporo Beer, Chris from Longo Lexus. All right, I'm ready. All right, we got 12 minutes. Give me one second. And three, two. All right, it's Peter Dills. We're back from the break. This is our last break up until nine o'clock when Lori Allen takes over playing America's greatest country hits. Um, We talked to Jim Cascone. He mentioned Harris Ranch. Harris Ranch is a proud partner here on go country 105 well at least for the peter dills food report and if you're still in a situation where you're not comfortable going outside turtle harris ranch will deliver to you i am i rarely go out peter you know um i I really try to stay home as much as possible and uh, keep my distance well i'm i'm at least six feet away from you but then again i'm seven feet tall so i exaggerate (laughs) on what exactly is the truth here but no harris ranch just go to shop.harrisranch.com. Shop.harrisranch.com. I guarantee you, you'll love the steaks, but you're going to have to go to shop.harrisranch.com. Okay, before we move into the believe it or not, I actually have, believe it or not, I have two more that I want, to, two more drinks that I want to tell you where the names came from. Okay. You know, I'm a big horse racing fan, right? Yes. Well, I can't wait. So, do you know anything that's going on with Santa Anita? Well, they're going to open. Everything? We just don't know if there's going to uh, allow uh, crowds. I mean, this COVID-19, the numbers are getting better and better all the time. And to be honest with you, if you've ever been to Santa Anita, it is a huge, huge track. You could fit 5,000 people in there easy, 2,500 in the infield and 2,500 in the stands, and, and you, they wouldn't see each other. What about UCLA? I wanted to get your take on uh, UCLA opting out this season. I know I, you're a big fan. I'm a big fan. And and what what, what is your take on that? I'm disappointed. But I'm di- everybody's disappointed. I'm just a member of the disappointed society. <laughs> okay, back to re- horse racing. The mint julep name has origins that go far back as the 1400s. Leslie Grossman is here from Halo Promotions. How can people get a hold of you at Halo Promotions? Leslie, right there. She's going to give herself a plug. Halo Promotions. She made my t-shirts. She makes my hats. Go ahead, Leslie. How do they get a hold of you? Right there. Well, all you have to do, my friends, is if you want your logo branded and advertised and succeed in life, just uh, email me, Leslie, L-E-S-L-I-E, dot Grossman, G-R-O-S-S-M-A-N, at halo.com. And I'll take care of everything. Thank you so much, Peter. That's Halo. That's Halo Promotions, Leslie. Okay, the uh, Kentucky Derby staple began with a bourbon whiskey base flavored with additions of sugar and mint. The term julep has Persian roots, and the original pronunciation was gullop. Gullop? How do you go from julep to gullop? I don't know. That's gullop essentially Are they the means. Same thing? Well, gullop essentially means in Persian sweetened rose water. Okay. Okay, that's it. Sweetened rose water. The mint julep. 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 Uh, an old-fashioned. You've made an old-fashioned. What's I've an made... O- okay, what's an old-fashioned there, Smarty Pants? Okay, so an old-fashioned, you get a orange uh, with a cherry, and then you get simple syrup or sugar. You muddle it, and then uh, you throw in some whiskey in there. Then you get a – what I do is I like to get a lemon rind and uh, do the essence around the um, – the glass, ice, whiskey, and uh, you top that off with some, uh, some cherry. water. So what about cherries? I said you, you throw oh. a cherry in the beginning because oh, you okay. have to muddle it. Oh, it's widely believed that this cocktail got the name from a lot of people who began ordering the drinks. I'll have it the old-fashioned way. Throughout the late 1800s, people ordering drinks in this fashion wanted to stick to the basics, and eventually the modifier old-fashioned became the name instantly for a classic cocktail with a lot of variations. I'll have it old and old fashioned. There's a few variations. I, I I don't make it that way specifically. Um, I've I learned through this bar that I've uh, bartended at and that I've worked at the Cove how to make it, and they sell like a thousand of them. Mike uh, Dobbs agrees with us. Never ever use steak sauce on a prime thank cut you. of beef. Thank All you. Thank right. you. So that's what we learned today. Okay. 
It is time. What is it time for, Peter? It is time for our weekly feature here on Go Country 105, Believe It or Not. Okay. That was a great (laughs) believe it or not, by the way. That's a believe it or not. (laughs) I I believe it or not. The ampersand used to be the 27th letter. Wait a minute. I got to ask you. Is one of these false? Is there a trick one? Well, well, I I don't know. But can we get some people out here to uh, see? Yeah, where'd everybody go? And they're all eating. Yeah, they're they're all eating. What about us? What about our food? (laughs) Hey, okay. (laughs) Believe it or not, (laughs) ampersand used to be the 27th letter in the English alphabet. Believe it or not, Steve Jobs' fortune came primarily primarily Steve Jobs' fortune came primarily from his stake in Disney, not from Apple earnings. I believe that. Believe it or okay, <laughs> believe it or not, Canada eats the most macaroni and cheese out of any nation in the world. Who cares? Believe it or not, Yelp will be installing new software to allow restaurants to review customers. That's the one. That's the one. Uh, is There's one more, believe it or is not. Is there? Okay. S- okay. Someone designed. <laughs> You're supposed. Peter. Believe it or not. Someone has designed a milk carton that changes color as it approaches its expiration date. Uh, kind of like Coors, the uh, Rocky Mountain. Yeah. The, the Rocky Mountains turn blue as the can gets colder. Yes. All right. So, wh- which one of those? There's one that you are not supposed to believe. Okay. In there. Okay. Amber Sand, I believe that. Steve Jobs' fortune came primarily from Disney. Well, primarily, uh, I, 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 I think he made a lot of money at Disney stock. Canada eats the most macaroni and cheese. I don't really, why would you put that in there? It's, it's probably true because you wouldn't make that up. Yelp will be installing new software to allow restaurants to review customers. I don't believe that. Someone has designed a milk carton to change its colors as it approaches expiration. If that's not true, we got to make that real, like, real quick because that's a <laughs> great idea. So my, my um, believe it or not, Yelp will be installing new software to allow restaurants to review customers. I don't believe that because that's negative and the restaurants would just be turning people off. Are you ready to I'm find ready. out which I'm going to get a drum roll? Okay. You are correct. Yeah. I mean, okay. All right. I like the milk carton idea. I wish I would have invented that. That's real. That. That's yeah. real. Where'd you come up with these? These are pretty good. I know. I know. I was like, you know what? The That Yelp review one was an idea that I've always had, and I always thought that's what should happen. Because if they get to review the restaurants, we should be able to get to review the customer. Because sometimes, okay, when I worked – in the industry i would get yelp reviewers that would come up to me and the first thing that they would say is i'm a yelp reviewer i want something free i want something free yeah and automatically i was it was was extremely disheartening i was like dude you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to be like a secret reviewer and here you are trying to shake me down so I can get a better review. I, you should you should be down a star or something. Yelp, Yelp is pretty shady, too. I used to work at a restaurant part-time, and I'd answer the phones, and it was Yelp calling the sales department, calling from San Francisco. Hey, you got some bad reviews, uh, but if uh, we, can't, we can't get rid of them, but if you pay us, we'll put them down. Where no. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot sue somebody for defamation if it's true. That is absolutely true. 100 percent. Wow. OK. So I thought that was a good idea. I, I, that's a know, good one. All I, right. You know, it was just some of my ideas that I had that I put out there that I was like, maybe we can, uh, I don't know, change people's minds. Remember, next week we're going to be at Boa Steakhouse. Oh, I cannot yeah. wait. Hopefully we'll get some gift cards from them to give away. Another you, reason to call 626-765-7543. Do you think we can ask them the question about um, about whether or not it is a, a, a what, what's what, apropos maybe apropos to, apropos a, apropos to put s- sauce on your steak? Well, we will definitely ask them that. Remember, if you missed any part of the show, you can stream us live on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Spotify. Follow us on Instagram, Peter Dills, Facebook, Peter Dills, YouTube, Peter Dills. Watch and replay all of the show. And all of the links are available at DiningWithDills.com. DiningWithDills.com. Go Country 105, huge supporter 
of Stagecoach, we would get probably when we would do trivia questions with the 866 number, we'd get 20 or 25 phone calls. Easy. So I do realize that this phone number that we're giving out, 626-765-7543, is new to you. But if you'd like, put it in your phone. It's a good way just to leave us a voicemail. And as always, if you do leave us a voicemail about a restaurant, we'll check it out and probably give them a plug right here on Go Country 105, Sunday mornings from 8 and to 9. 8 till 9. I seem like I'm in a rush today. Is you it are. because there's food behind us? There is and food. We're missing Everybody's, out? how is it we like help bring the food? Yeah. And everyone gets to eat it before us. It doesn't make any That's sense. That's a barbecue, though, sometimes. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who helped put on the show together. Ken for opening up Ken. his house, Ken his for grill. Uh, hope, uh, having us here and eating and all the friends that came by to cheer us on. And now it's time, Turtle and listeners for Go Country 105. It's my it's the time for food for thought. Don't forget to enjoy your life while chasing your dreams. Oh. Brilliant. Brilliant? You like that? I, I like that. That's very beautiful. Uh, this portion of our show is brought to you by Carl D. Barnes, attorney at law, 1-800-6-BARNES, 1-800-6-BARNES. If you've been into a car accident and you're seeking legal advice, free legal advice, don't hesitate to get on the phone and call 1-800-6-BARNES, 1-800-6-BARNES. The first part of the show is brought to you by Tattinger Champagne, my favorite champagne, real French champagne, available at Avon's or Pavilion's near you okay friends that's gonna wrap up the show thank you for tuning in until next time i'll see you at my dining table but don't stop by boa steakhouse because it's we're, we're gonna it's just gonna be turtle and me <laughs> it's gonna be a great time we cannot wait thank you everybody and uh we're out of here yeah we're out of here thanks everybody tiny with deals you're tiny with deals You're gonna get your delicious meal, yeah.